So we wanted to take a moment before you start this lesson to give you some heads up on some issues that we've found have been difficult for students in the past. And they really boil down to two things. And we have uh, Dr. Shumway and Dr. Rosenberg here to kind of discuss these and give you a little heads up. The first one that we're going to talk about is this idea of experimental design and having to know what the experimental design is and having that drive the decision of a, what statistical model you're going to use. You can't do it the other way around. The second point is thinking about the nature of the experiments and the nature of the treatments and how they're applied. And so we'll talk about these two things very briefly and you'll see them more clearly in the notes. The a uh, statistician needs to understand how the data were generated. And one issue that often is a problem is identifying whether two factors in a multi-factor study are crossed or if one factor is nested within the other. And one way to think about that to help decide is to identify whether the levels of one of the factors has the same meaning across the levels of the other factor. If they do, the factors are crossed. Another way to say that is that we can think of the word unique. If the levels of one factor are unique to the levels of a second factor, then we have nesting. We really don't have the situation of creating all possible treatment combinations. So this is one of the ways that I normally do it, is to ask myself, can I uh, logically create the treatment combinations, do they actually exist? Uh, many times it, if they don't exist, then we can see that they are unique to the levels of one of the other treatments and we would say that those are nested. Maybe you could give us an example of one, Darlin? Um, we were discussing one where we had uh, a, a study that wanted to compare two different kinds of drugs uh, and they um, noticed that they, they wanted to uh, look at the manufacturer of the drugs as well. So uh, we have say two different drugs and each drug is made by two different manufacturers but the manufacturers of the drugs aren't each drug is made by two different manufacturers. For example drug one could be made by Pfizer and Roche. Drug two may be manufactured by Bayer and Johnson & Johnson. So we really can't construct all of the treatment combinations, for example, drug one manufactured by Bayer doesn't exist. We, we, we can't, we can't uh, construct that one. So we would say that the manufacturers are nested within the drugs. So these are some of the things, things to think about as you encounter this unit and trying to sort out what we know is a problem area in this course. One of the things that uh, Linda mentioned is that um, the, the um, the treatment design is going to be driving uh, the construction of the ANOVA, not vice versa. Um, for example, sometimes people might want to uh, code these things and say, well, we'll have drug and that will be at level 1 and 2. We might say that the manufacturer will call it 1 and 2 for drug 1 and then 1 and 2 for drug 2. And in that case, then, if we handed it to the computer, uh, it could easily construct factorial type uh, combinations. Uh, and you could run it that way, but it would be incorrect. So um, we have to look at the nature of the treatments themselves and ask that question, um, are the levels of one uh, treatment unique to the levels of the second treatment? Uh, we can, we want to use that as, the, uh, as our guideline and not force the computer to do something just out of convenience. A similar example would be if you have three or more operators testing a new procedure, uh, they could be the same operators testing procedure one, or they could be a different set of operators. If you, for example, have procedure one in one location, operator one, two, and three would not be the same as operator one, two, and three in another location. So there you would have nested structure. If the same operators test the two procedures, then they would be crossed. So, again, understanding how the experiment was conducted is needed to know whether two factors are crossed or nested. One other piece uh, that I use for um, working these things out 
uh, is to draw a study diagram. The first thing I do is to lay it out on a piece of paper and draw it so I can see visually uh, what the relationship is among the different treatment levels. Sometimes as we're talking about these things, it can kind of get mixed up in our minds, but when you draw it out on a piece of paper, you can see whether or not um, the levels are unique to certain other treatment levels. So hopefully this will kind of prime the pump for this unit so that you can start to think about this distinction between crossed and nested. We'll provide some more examples in the notes, and of course you'll be working through this on your homework. So keep those good questions coming.